Remember that one time an interdimensional Pokemon fused with the game's main antagonist? Well, you probably do because it was just last generation, but it still haunts my dreams to this very day. So, what was the deal with all that? Viewer beware, you're in for a scare because this is... The Tragedy of Lusamine. From the very first time we were introduced to the Aether Foundation in a trailer, it was pretty obvious they could possibly end up being the true villains of Pokemon Sun and Moon. And they were. Okay, not everyone in the Aether Foundation was technically a villain, it was mostly Lusamine and she redeemed herself afterwards, but she's still the main villain of the games that we need to defeat. She's got a lot of crimes under her belt over the course of the game, and she makes for a great villain. We first meet her early on when we're introduced to the Aether Foundation as a whole. While Lusamine's character design is bright, elegant, and appealing, there's still a sense of mystery to her. Subtle things about her, like her hair covering part of her face, sleek lines ending in harsh edges, and stark black contrasting her white clothing could hint at her true intentions. While her musical theme adds to this feeling, it's a little comforting but it also makes you feel uneasy or like you should be expecting something else to happen. But we do get to find out later that her story is actually pretty tragic. Initially, she had a happy family altogether but lost her husband during an experiment. We find out later that he's still alive, just teleported elsewhere and memories erased. But before the events of the game, Lusamine becomes obsessed with getting him back, and eventually becomes obsessed with Ultra Beasts as a whole, to the point where she loses her sense of self and pushes away her children with her attempts to control them, and you know, the verbal abuse when they don't listen. Eventually she kidnaps Nebby the Cosmog and nearly kills it to create a portal to Ultra Space, while causing endangerment to the entire region with Ultra Wormholes. And yes, we can understand what brings her to this point, but it's still villainous behavior. Lusamine's actions are some of the creepiest we've seen from Pokemon villains. While the Aether Foundation is bright white, it contributes to the eerie feeling, playing on the discomfort associated with experimentation, especially as we get to discover Lusamine's hidden laboratory. And this is one of the most unsettling things in a Pokemon game I've ever seen. Sure, Team Rocket was said to have killed a Marowak off screen, but here we get to see with our own eyes Pokemon that have been frozen against their will. Lusamine takes great pride in what she calls her collection, her precious babies, and intends to keep them frozen and preserved for eternity. I know that Pokemon is a science fiction fantasy game, so these Pokemon could still be alive, but if Lusamine was just going to keep them frozen for Forever, how is that any different from killing them? If we were to look at this realistically, these Pokemon are straight up dead, just having their bodies preserved for show. A fun fact is that some of the Pokemon we see are actually mentioned in a children's story we get to read in Ultra Sun and Moon. So these Pokemon could be some personal favorites because this is a story she used to read to her own children. And while that's a little touching, it actually just makes everything even creepier. But this is such a great moment for Lusamine as a character. Because we get to see the lengths that she would go to in order to keep these Pokemon near. There isn't just the Aether Foundation to provide a home for Pokemon, there's a secret laboratory with her personal favorites on ice. And she does this after having been left alone. Her husband is gone and both of her children ran away. In her mind, this is the only way that she can keep what she loves. That is until she can drain Cosmog of its energy and create a portal to Ultra Space. Side note, I like the design of the cage she uses to contain Cosmog, because it resembles Necrozma which we know from Ultra Sun and Moon is able to absorb its evolved forms, Solgaleo and Lunala. But Lusamine yeets out of there and after a journey to get our own butts to Ultra Space, we get to revel in yet another creepy location. Once again, the visuals and music do such a great job setting the scene. We really don't get to see much of Ultra Space in these games, but I love what we do get to see. Neo Ligo fade in and out and the music creeps around with them. And then the final battle with Lusamine begins. As if the frozen Pokemon weren't creepy enough, this abomination will do the trick. I love how both Lusamine and Neoligo have bright color schemes, but they become dark when combined as Neoligo amplifies Lusamine's inner feelings. Neoligo being a symbiote-like creature intensifies the emotions and abilities of the host. This is a manifestation of the evil Lusamine has committed through the events of the game. Sadly, this isn't the creature we get to battle as she sends out her usual team, but the fact that this is the climax of the story still sets it above others. But since then, Game Freak has tried a final battle with an unusable Pokemon in Eternamax Eternatus in Sword and Shield. 
So a 2v1 battle against Jelly Lusamine could have definitely happened, but once she's defeated, Lusamine reconciles with Lily and isn't seen again. I like that they get a moment together and that Lusamine is redeemed by the end of the story. Because we get to see the family she would have left behind had she been off to like some other villains, and because many of the atrocities she committed were felt personally by those who still wanted to stop and save her. It's still crazy just how much she got away with and how far the story went. Genuinely, one of my favorite villains. I do think that Lusamine's encounters are some of the most unnerving in Pokemon. I wouldn't call these interactions outright scary, but they've stuck with me ever since the initial release of the game so long ago. The more that you think about it all, the scarier they get. The implications behind the frozen Pokemon are probably the worst, especially because we never hear anything about them again. Did they ever get out? Did they survive? Or were they just disposed of? I think we could assume that they were released and maybe survived, as something similar happens with some of the Type Null that were put on ice, but the fact that these Pokemon are never mentioned again still keeps me up at night. I recently rewatched Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, and while that movie has some overtly scary scenes, the one that's burned into my mind is at the very end, where the Ark is put into some warehouse among thousands of other boxes containing who knows what. It's a similar case with the frozen Pokemon. There could be countless other Pokemon just hidden away, never to be heard from ever again. Who really knows for sure? They're unfortunately just a side note in the tragedy of Lusamine. Well, well, wasn't that quite the scary story? But anyway, hey, this is GatorX, and let me know what you think in the comments below about this Halloween video. If you enjoyed this one, you can leave a like and subscribe to show your support. You can also enable notifications to make sure you see each new video as it comes out. But anyway, this has been GatorX. Have a scary day.